Everyone, let's talk a little bit about stress. It's a thing that people deal with it a lot in college, and unfortunately, students come to me and they say, uh, I'm dealing with stress a lot in the chemistry class, and I'll ask them, well, is there any other class that deal with stress, or that you get this freaked out about? And sometimes they have a class, but in most cases, no. I am the center of all your oppressive, stressful feelings. And so, I want to talk about that a little bit so that you can learn how to deal with it, okay? Uh, stress can come out in a number of ways, and I kind of like to think of different areas of a person's life. you got the academic, the spiritual, the emotional, the physical. And so, academics is really how well prepared you feel and if you're studying well. And I talk about that in other videos in class, so I'm not going to focus on that one too much really today. Spiritual uh, is something that's helped me a lot. Uh, ideally, if you have a spiritual background, that's something that should be helping you. But, you know, I'm not going to focus on that as much today. And then there's the emotional and physical. So, are there emotional things going on in your life or just general stress? Uh, accumulation that's causing you issues, and then as well as physically what's going on. Alright, so let me talk about a couple things to think about. Uh, we'll talk about before, during, and a little bit after uh, a particular exam. So before. For before an exam, uh, some people don't get stressed, so this might not be for you. But if you do start to feel the stress before the exam, here's what I'd recommend. Don't think that you're going to study for like 10 hours straight and just get it down. I mean, your mind just can't handle it for that long, even though chemistry is awesome. Totally understand. So, because your mind's not going to be able to handle it for that long, plan in breaks. What I would do when I was a student, I would stay for 20, 30 minutes and then take one or two minute break. And repeat, so on and so forth. Every couple hours, I'd have to take a more major break. If you want to, you know, every couple hours or so or whatever time period works for you, that's when you can go on Facebook, you know, plan that out. Plan to do your random whatever activities that feel like you're wasting time, but if you plan it in, you know it's going to happen. Uh, a, what it can help you do when you take breaks or stretch or exercise or something like that, those little... Uh, commercial breaks that you put in with the study, that can help kind of bring you down to a baseline of stress. See what happens is, over time, and this can happen before you even get to the exam, your stress slowly goes up. So what you want to do is bring this down uh, back to a little bit of a baseline movement, and then it'll start to go up with it again, you bring it back down, and so on and so forth. So that's what taking breaks can do, it kind of refocuses your mind and stuff like that. Now, of course, before an exam, you need, of course, eat, eat breakfast, sleep, stuff like that. In most cases, what I've seen, students who uh, pull an all-nighter, it tends not really to be worth it. So I'd recommend not doing that as much as you can help it. That's all before. Now, let's talk about right as you're arriving to the exam. Again. Your, your stress, for most people, is going up for that time. Again, if you feel stress, totally normal. Feel anxiety, totally normal. So, what I recommend after the breakfast and all that stuff, uh, some sort of physical activity. So, if that's biking briskly to uh, your exam room, doing jumping jacks, okay, you're going to look totally awkward, people are going to laugh at you but at least that brings your baseline down for your stress um, and it resets you a little bit. So any sort of physical activity to get your heart rate moving can be helpful. Uh, another thing people do, listen to music that calms you down. Now, that sort of stuff can't totally be done in an exam. That would be pretty weird. So you have to go through other routes actually during the exam. Um, but that's stuff you can do right up leading up to the exam. All right, during the exam, what, what can you do? Well, I recommend every maybe about 15, 20 minutes of an exam to take a little 30 second break or so. 
you might be thinking, well, that's wasting my time because if I'm taking a break, I'm not getting the answers on the page. If the exam's long, I'm in big trouble. Well, that can be okay because the problem is when your stress is going up, your thinking ability goes down and your efficiency to answer problems goes down. So you're actually doing uh, less efficient work over time on the exam. If you can bring this baseline down, so every once in a while you take a break, it restarts you. You take a break, it restarts you. The stress is going to continue to go up over time, but those breaks can sort of reset you over time. So that's what I really recommend. Now, what do you do during your break? Okay, it's kind of like refocusing yourself. It's like you're, you're watching a movie, you're doing your thing, the exam is your whole world, and you kind of breathe for a moment, you, you remember that this exam is not going to kill you. You remember that your life will still go on. Okay, you refocus the truth of your life and perspective. You get into capital R reality here. You don't uh, succumb to the exam. The other things I would do, breathe. So remember to breathe. Sometimes people, you can totally see it when, you're proc when I'm proctoring an exam, people get more stressed over the time. They don't really breathe. They're kind of almost holding their breath or breathing very shallow breaths. You're not getting oxygen to your brain. So deep breath, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Do that a couple times. Gets the oxygen flowing again, resets you, brings down the stress level. Another thing, it's kind of funny to watch during exams, people tense up, they get all awkward, weird looking, kind of like that. Um, you need to like relax everything. A lot of times people carry stress in their shoulders, so you see their shoulders kind of go up during the exam like that. Uh, what you can do uh, is pick a muscle group, uh, easy one is the shoulders. For five seconds, you tense them, and then you relax. And that relax kind of releases that stress that is built up, built up. You can do that with another muscle group. Sometimes people do it with their eyes by holding their eyes tight for five seconds, then releasing. That along with breathing can kind of release the stress a little bit. You refocus. Because the main problem that you have with stress during an exam, maybe you're studying. Maybe you don't get stressed before the exam. It's only during And you're crushing the practice exams. You think you're walking to the exam getting an A or a B. The stress level, basically the higher it goes, the more it lowers your grade. So where you go in thinking you're going to get, say, a B plus, you might end up getting a C plus, and that's all due to stress. Because you don't remember, you know, the things that you learned. And uh, sometimes we call that doing silly mistakes, or you're like blinking out on the exam, things like that. So that's why kind of de-stressing for a moment is helpful. Now, what you want to make sure you do when you de-stress uh, during an exam, don't look around. Okay, don't be a goofball because you start looking around here, I'm gonna drop kick your butt over to Student Judicial Affairs for cheating. Okay, so make sure you know it's totally you'll, you'll totally be fine. Just look straight ahead, or you can look up for a second, um, as long as you don't have some wandering eyes looking at other people's exams. You'll be totally fine. Now, one more thing, uh, and this is kind of before and uh, after the exam. I, uh, now, social media is awesome, Facebook, Yik Yak, all, all Periscope, all that kind of stuff, totally fun to do. But before an exam and after exam, not a good idea. It usually raises people's stress level because there's crazy people on there posting to say that, oh, I'm going to screw up this exam, the exam's going to crush me, or after the exam, they're like, that exam was horrible, uh, everybody failed, stuff like that. And it, I've noticed it significantly increases the stress level of people. Even after, might not be a good thing, because that just builds for the next exam and makes it more crazy. And people totally lie on there uh, all the time. I've, I've followed sometimes, and it's said that People contacted me, and I apparently told them that I'm going to fail the class after an exam because everybody did so poorly. It's total lies. I never say that. Whatever I say in class, that's the reality. But people post these crazy things. I've even heard from seniors 
They think it's funny to mess with you all freshmen if you're a freshman. Go on, post on social media all this crazy stuff just to see how you'll react. Okay, so there's a lot of craziness going on. I recommend avoiding it. It's just going to raise your stress level, whether it's people posting before the exam or even after. Just don't get into it, okay? Save it for later after you really know how your grade's coming out and stuff like that. All right, so I hope this helped. I uh, hope you crush your next exam.